Hello everyone, welcome to my 2022 movies rankings video. This one's going to be a little bit different from the last two because to be completely honest with you, I had a bit of a hard time last year working on the, the 2021 movies video because obviously I tried to cram 50 something movies in a 40 minute video that I had to try and get done in like two and a half weeks. It was not a fun time. So this year I thought a good workaround would be to do it as a stream instead and I, th I had a really good time doing it and I think people really enjoyed but I still got a lot of people asking me to turn it into a video and so here we are. So obviously this one's not going to be quite the same as the other two, but I did my best to condense my two hour ramblings into something watchable. And I also want to apologize in advance for how shit the quality is. My stupid ass forgot to hit the record button on OBS when I started streaming, so I didn't have a backup of the footage, so I had to just pull the thing from YouTube. And that's why I'm in like 240p the entire time. So sorry about that, but I thought I'd still make it anyway, so I hope you enjoy. Will I spoil any of the movies? No. I will, um, I'm going to do the same rules as like the normal videos, basically. Uh, I want I watched about, I want to say like 60 movies, 60 something that came out in 2022. There's still a lot of stuff I missed. I didn't quite, I didn't catch uh, Pinocchio. Uh, I didn't get a lot of streaming movies. I didn't get to see Lightyear. I didn't get to see Strange World, even though I really wanted to see that one in the cinemas. I, I did a pretty good job of keeping up at like uh, the movies. Uh, not a lot of streaming stuff this year. So I've got... On my laptop, I've got my letterboxed up and we're going through a uh, release order. So we're going to go from like earlier of the year to later. So like Puss in Boots isn't going to be too last, sorry. So I started with Morbius, which is obviously the best movie of the entire year. I, I already talked about Morbius in that um like superhero movies video I did. I don't really think I have to talk about Morbius again. I think we all get the point. You know, everything around it was really funny and the movie is almost a year old as of next month and I still find it really funny. But my God, the second I got in that cinema and the movie actually started, I was like, dude, I fucking, I biggest regret of my life. Okay, The House was a stop motion film on Netflix. I thought this was really, really good. I, I really liked it. It's like three completely different stories. The first one I loved, the second one I liked as well. The third one kind of lost me a bit, but it was still pretty good. Overall, I thought it was really well done. It has like these really uncomfortable vibes. So I really enjoyed it. I definitely recommend it. It's just on Netflix. Oh God, yes, this next one. Okay. <laughs> No, this one's not worse than Morbius. Okay, so uh, there's going to be a lot of movies in here that my friends made me watch. And this was one that we all went to their house. And one of my friends, she picked this one. And it was one of the, like, so obviously they were the ones that picked the after movies, which I talked about last year. I think um after, the third after movie was like, I think it was the 50th one last year, like the last one I rated. So yeah, we we're trying to look for something that was worse than after. So we watched stuff like 365 Days, which was a fucking nightmare. And there was this one through my window, which was a um abysmal... <laughs> Spanish romance movie, which was so, so uncomfortable to watch. Like, after's funny bad. This was like, I feel like I should have been in prison for watching it. I gotta get to ones people have actually seen. Uncharted! I honestly did not think it was, it was bad. I gotta be honest. I thought it was fine. I didn't think that, um, Tom Holland or Mark Wahlberg were like, my problems with their casting was still the exact same. Like, I still didn't see them as Nathan Drake or Sully. But aside from that, I thought it was like pretty good. Like, it was better than I thought it was going to be. And I, I hope they do another one because I feel like there's a lot to improve on. I'm a bit confused though if it was supposed to be like a prequel or not because I thought that's what they said that it was meant to be a prequel to the, the games even though that it's like the games already did a prequel thing but then they lift like, you know, as you see in the trailer there's like that set piece straight out of Uncharted 2. So I'm assuming it's like a prequel to its own universe thing? I don't know. There is no subway in the movie. Choo, choo. Texas Chainsaw, the Netflix one. Holy shit, this movie was not very good. I tried approaching it with like, it's gonna be funny. And they, they tried doing the thing like in Halloween where they bring back the, the main character from the first one. It's like so, oh, it was just insulting. I know Netflix has not had a very good track record this year, so I'm not really sure why anyone's surprised. The Batman! This shit was so good! The Batman was incredible. I've never watched a movie that's that long that went by that quickly. So I saw this at a perfect session. It was like 4 p.m. on a weekday and no one was there except me and this other woman like later, like much further down the row. It was so quiet. It was beautiful. I loved it. Like I went into it with like, um, like this is going to be like, you know, a really special kind of Batman movie. And there was obviously a lot of hype around it. But I think even removed from that, I was like, this is going to be so good. Like this is definitely my favorite take on a movie Batman for sure. I am so excited for more of these. Yeah, there was that one scene at the end I didn't like, which I think a lot of people agree with but I think it's you know like if that being the worst part is is fine yeah that Batman's gonna be my top five for sure that was like unbelievably good my nonna took me to see this Italian movie at an Italian film festival called L'Ombra del Giorno I'm gonna mispronounce that yeah I was like full-on expecting going into this Italian movie and not even like there's not even gonna be subtitles but it was thank god it was good it was fine it's just <laughs> 
you know, like it was a movie about like uh, it's Italy in like World War II. I couldn't really tell you much about it, but I wanted to include it here because I saw it. Okay, Toning Red, I feel like is going to be a divisive one. I, I thought it was super different for Pixar, and I know a lot of people weren't a big fan of like the um, cartoony sort of style. I thought it was fantastic. Like, I, I thought it was really funny, like, like super funny for a Pixar movie. I think it was really stupid. People were going on about this movie for having like, you know, like more mature themes in it. Like, I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was really well done. And I think it was like a very honest look at that period of your life. Everything, everywhere, all at once, I, I want to say is probably my favorite movie of the whole year. All I, all I knew about it going into it, like I avoided the trailers completely. Um, I really wanted to go into it not knowing anything about it and I succeeded for once and it was like, it blew me away. Like it's so creative. Every, like it nails everything. Like the emotional moments, the comedic beats, the, the action even was really good. Maybe later in the year, um, I think everyone's a bit sick of hearing about it, but it is definitely the most memorable movie. I, like I still remember it as if I saw it yesterday. Today. Like, it's so fresh um, and interesting. I fucking, like, I adored it. I, I don't know. Like, normally when I see a movie, I, like, zone out sometimes in the cinema. Like, I'm thinking about stuff. Both Batman and everything. I was sitting there in the cinema. My thoughts were entirely with the movie. I was not thinking about anything else. Um, Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent Um, obviously sells itself. It's Nicolas Cage playing a movie about himself. I thought it was pretty good. I, I honestly, like, I, I didn't go into it. I didn't get out of it as much as I wanted to. Like, I think it was a bit more, like, serious at times than I think. I think everyone was expecting more of a comedy and it is but like I, th I want to rewatch it because I feel like I didn't have a good cinema experience which can like make or break a movie for me which is why Batman was so good because there was no one to ruin it like outside of the fact that it's like Nicolas Cage I didn't think it was like super standout and I also haven't seen a lot of Nicolas Cage movies outside of like the the big meme ones so I feel like a lot of the um references were lost on me X and Pearl I actually watched the, these are the two most recent ones I watched I saw X in cinemas in like May but I rewatched it with some friends because Pearl hasn't come out in Australia yet and they haven't actually given us a release date so I had to legally acquire that one. When I saw X, I wasn't a huge fan of it the first time. Like, slasher movies aren't really my thing. I don't know if that's obvious. <laughs> X didn't leave a super big impression on me. Like, I thought it was very well made, but I didn't really get too into it. Like, but watching Pearl, which is like, uh, for those who don't know, is like the origin story of the grandma in X. I, I, I feel like Pearl should have come first, because I, I got like way more out of X, because we rewatched it after we watched Pearl. And I liked X so much more, like knowing the background. I feel like I would have gotten so much more out of X had I known all that about the grandma first. Yeah, so X I thought, like I liked it more the second time. Maybe under Uncharted, uh, but Pearl I want to put up here, that was great. Pearl I loved a lot more. It's definitely, like I see why they would have done X more as like a bigger, wider release, like slasher movie that appeals to more people. Pearl is more like a character study, sort of slower, movie, um, but I thought it was really, really good. Bodies, Bodies, Bodies was one of my favorite movies of the year, and all of the friends I went with fucking despised it. Like, I was watching their reactions while we were, um, in the cinema, and everyone looked miserable. Like, I understand why it wouldn't be for everybody. Like, the twist of it, which I feel like could compl- I understand why it would ruin it for people, but I laughed so hard. Even for, like, a mostly comedy, I was, like, genuinely stressed out during it. Like, it really- I was really engrossed in it. What is it about? Okay, so it's like a murder mystery movie about, um, a bunch of kids who go like to a holiday home and they play this this game called bodies 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 where like you know it's like murder in the dark that's what i used to call it when i was a kid and then you know the lights go out and then uh, someone actually dies and they have to figure out who the killer is i i love i thought it was so funny the characters are all like one of them i think his name was greg they had like a fucking 40 year old man along with all these kids it was so funny the bad guys dreamworks his first movie this was so good i want to put it yeah better than turning red i reckon the bad guys was fucking phenomenal like it, it was like the day after it was going to leave the cinema and it was like packed with kids and I had this moment of dread just as I was about to enter the cinema as like an adult man going by himself to see a kids movie surrounded by children in a cinema. I felt like a fucking nonce. Um, I really did not want to go in there. <laughs> Uh, but I actually ended up having a really good time, uh, which was fortunate. Like, everyone was surprisingly quiet. Like, I had horror movies I saw this year where the cinema was louder and more obnoxious than a cinema filled with actual children. In terms of the actual movie, it was filled with, like, so much energy and the whole cast had so much charisma. It was a complete blast the entire time. The only thing I wish, and I know this is such an incredibly specific nitpick, but there were just 
a lot of fart jokes in it, uh, which I've heard was in the book it was based on originally, so what can you do? But I don't know, it kind of just stood out to me as being a bit like kiddier than the rest of it. It didn't really mesh well in that department because the rest of it surprised me with how much it didn't feel like it was catering toward like a younger audience. I don't th I think it could have been worse. Like it wasn't terrible, but yeah, I love the bad guys were super like I had so much fun. It was genuinely some of the most fun I've had in the cinema the whole year. Okay, Incantation. This was a Netflix horror movie one of my friends made me watch and as a really big fan of found footage, I was surprised at how much I didn't really get much out of it. If you saw Scream 5, then you missed it. Oh, did I miss Scream, you're right. Shit, I just completely missed that one. Okay, I got to that next. Yeah, Incantation was like pretty good. I um I didn't love it. Like it was um I think I think this movie had like a thing on TikTok, and that's why a lot of people were talking about it. I I'd never heard of it before. My friend suggested it to me, but you know I had a good time watching it with him. But I just it wasn't like super stand out to me. It was like a ghost sort of possession movie. There were like two different stories of like the present with this uh, mom and her like daughter, and then slowly throughout the movie they showed you like how everything happened, like flashbacks. I think it was like, the build up was really good, but I just didn't quite feel like it, it like got there for me. Okay, Scream's next, sorry. Scream was literally the first movie that came out in the whole year and I forgot. I really like Scream, I really enjoyed it. There was a there was a moment I really didn't like involving my favorite character. I'm sure people who have seen it are aware of that. It, it basically did right what the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Netflix did, didn't do right, if that makes sense. But yeah, my, again, they kind of do the thing with like the legacy characters with like the ones in the original movies and they put them in there because they have to be, but like, they didn't do much in it, really. And I, I think that was like po the point. It was sort of like a meta commentary on uh, these like, what do they call them, requels? I think it was, which is pretty funny. How many people saw RRR? Because I feel like a lot of people were talking about this. My One of my friends suggested we go see this Indian movie called RRR and I was like, no, because <laughs> it was three hours long and I was worried like I wouldn't really get into it. So I went into the cinema like dreading it. And I, like the second it started, I was not, I did not, like look back. I had a smile on my face for three hours. It did not feel three hours. This movie felt faster than the Batman did. I had so much fun. Like I've seen it one and a half times. Like I was I was trying to spread the gospel with some of my other friends. We only made it halfway through, but genuinely the action is so over the top, but in a good, like it is genuinely jaw dropping. Like the some of the shit they do in this movie is incredible. Indian movies have an intermission, um, my friend taught me. And I, for the first time ever, I got genuinely frustrated that there was like an intermission. <laughs> I was like, no, bring the movie back. Yeah, everyone needs to see it. I can't stress this enough. Like, even if even if you're like, oh, you know, it's Indian, oh, it's a historical sort of, I don't care, watch this movie. It is fucking phenomenal. I cannot stress this enough. Sonic the Hedgehog 2. It actually, I can't believe, I can't decide whether I like this or RRR more. That's how good RRR was. I, this is probably my most anticipated movie of the yeah, and they didn't disappoint. I thought it was like it actually made me dislike the first one more because I feel like with the first one I sort of like tolerated certain stuff about it that I didn't enjoy as much because you know it's a Sonic movie but Sonic 2 definitely improved on everything I didn't like aside from there was like one subplot with the sister and wedding that I like could not care less about I kind of just wanted to go back to Sonic and stuff but it was a lot heavier on the actual like Sonic Tails and Knuckles, um, they definitely had like a bigger budget for it and they used it very well. Like it was everything I could have wanted and more. Knuckles and Tails were fantastic. I I was very worried about um, Knuckles being Idris Elba, even though like I love Idris Elba. I was a bit worried, but they they knocked it out of the park. I, I hope they keep making these forever, honestly. Jim Carrey was the best part. Yeah, Jim Carrey was phenomenal. Um, I'm going to be very disappointed if he's not in the third one. Like Jim Carrey is definitely a big part of what makes them so good and he was even better in that one. But what a hell of a send off if this is his uh, last Dr. Robotnik performance. I was just sitting there with a dumbass smile on my face every reference or like every time Knuckles was on screen. Did you think Knuckles' voice was sexy? Yes. Do you remember that article where Idris Elba was like, Knuckles is not going to be sexy? That man is a liar. The Northman is the one I really want to watch again. I feel like I didn't get as much out of it as I, um, as I wanted to. I could not see shit in this movie. I don't know whether my glasses were like smudged or the cinema was just dark, but I couldn't see half the fucking movie. Um, but like any Robert Eggers movie with like The Witch and the Lighthouse, I think um, I always need to watch it again to get like a proper, like The Witch and the Lighthouse I like a lot more on reflection than when I actually watch them. And I feel like The Northman will be the same. Uh, it, it was interesting though, seeing his style with like a, a much bigger budget. Like it's such a weird case study of like, I can't believe some execs were like, yeah, let's give this guy like $200 million. <laughs> like it bombed super hard, which is, is sad because it's like really unique. Eggers has a very interesting way of like immersing you in um, worlds that he 
he presents. Like, obviously, he's very fond of, like, historical accuracy, so... He's still got a lot of stuff in there, like, um, that I think, mo like, most audiences wouldn't really gel with. Ah, finally, Marvel. Doctor Strange. This year, every Marvel movie I've seen, like Black Panther and Thor, I went to the cinema, I really enjoyed it, I had no problems with it. Like, I know everyone's talking about, like, Marvel fatigue and how Phase 4 has been shit and everything. I, I had no problem with any of them that I've seen this year. I, I watched it like a normal Marvel movie, I enjoyed it, and I went home. And then I went on the Reddit discuss discussion thread, and everyone is, like, ragging on these movies. And I, I think I feel like I've retroactively not liked them as much because I've heard so many shit things. What I thought the movie was gonna be about, I kind of wanted more. Like, this is where avoiding the trailers maybe kind of screwed me over, but I heard that the trailer was a bit misleading as well. I went into this movie expecting that it was going to be Doctor Strange and Wanda teaming up to go through like different universes and there was going to be like a horror element. But anyway, the actual movie is not like that at all. It's very different. And I, I liked where it went for sure. Like I definitely had fun with it. Uh, yeah, I feel like the multiverse aspect was kind of underused a little bit. Like it wasn't really, it, it was kind of just there in the background. Like I, I, I liked the movie. I just think expectations for everybody was kind of a bit of a kicker with it. But no, I liked it. I thought it was good. The first Doctor Strange movie is not one of my favorite Marvel movies, which a lot of people really like that one. So I think this one was better. And yeah, obviously like Doctor Strange is like super interesting. They always go really hard with like creative fight scenes and everything. Um, and I, I was really happy about Sam Raimi doing it as well. Like, um, I agree with a lot of people when saying like, compared to a lot of other Marvel movies, it definitely felt like stylistically different with how it was presented. Okay, Top Gun was so good. I I want to put this... Oh, I'm gonna get that Sonic bias in there. I'm sorry. I agree with what a lot of people are saying in that I think in a like in a, an environment of like an overabundance of CGI when you can do anything with movies now, there is still something really appealing about seeing them do it like practically. I'm just so surprised. Nobody, I don't know if anyone remembers, nobody thought this was going to be good. Like this got, it got delayed in like 2020. It was meant to come out like two years ago. And everyone was like, oh great, like a legacy sequel to a, like a spin-off of a movie from the 80s. Like it's going to be so shit. Nobody could have expected how hard they went with this movie. But yeah, Top Gun was a blast. The cinema I was in was so loud. I was, I went to go see it with my grandpa. He just like fucking turned his hearing aid off halfway through. I, I, I watched the first Top Gun the night before I went to go see it. And the, the, like, I really like the first Top Gun, but that's definitely more of like a sort of like, you know, vibes movie. Like, it's a good, like, summer vibes. Top Gun Maverick, I think, they definitely added a lot more stakes in it. Like, I definitely got nervous uh, during the movie, which I which I enjoyed. Like, I thought it was really, um, it was just really exciting. Like, it was good to sit in the cinema and just, like, have a, have a really good time. Chip and Dale, I am interested to hear what people think of this, because this also got very mixed reviews, and... I'm worried at how much I liked it. I thought it was really fun. I thought it, it was a lot darker than I thought it was going to be, and the cameos didn't feel, like, gratuitous, I guess. The ugly Sonic joke was Dude, fucking right hysterical. I will give them that. Uh, I understand why people wouldn't have taken to it, but I, yeah, I really liked it. I thought it was great. Yeah, the whole, like, bootlegging plot was kind of fucked up, I guess. I guess I enjoyed that aspect about it, that it was kind of, like really messed up. Like, that's what I'm talking about. Like, it's surprising what they can get away with. Like, with Puss in Boots as well, I think they're really pushing what you can do with, a, a like, a PG kids movie now. Did anybody see 3,000 Years of Longing with Idris Elba? I feel like three people know what this movie is. 3,000 Years of Longing I thought was pretty good. It kind of didn't stick the landing for me at the end. Um, the first two-thirds are, like, Idris Elba and T Tilda Swinton in a hotel room. He's a, he's a genie in this movie, for those who don't know. He's a, he's a jinn. And he he's, like, telling stories of, like, the first... Uh, like all the previous wish holders that uh, had his lamp. It was really well presented. Like you get really lost in the stories he's telling. I think this one might have been affected by COVID though, because the last third of it kind of feels a bit out of place. And, like it feels intentional. It's not like something they had to just come up with out of the blue, but I think just in terms of like flowing into the rest of it, um, I did really like the ending. I thought it was really sweet, but like it just didn't feel like it was quite on the same level as the rest of the movie, if that makes sense. My friend and I decided to go see two Idris Elba movies in uh, in one night. Uh, we called it the Big Driss double feature. Uh, this and Beast, which is the other one. I definitely like 3,000 years more, especially because we were the only freaking people in the whole cinema. Jurassic World Dominion is another one that um, I think is interesting. I didn't hate it, but I feel like that was my like monkey brain. As soon as I saw like the guys from the original movie all together, I, I thought it was like incredibly stupid, but I thought it was like dumb fun. I didn't like 
hate it as much as everybody else did. But I absolutely understand why everybody would have hated it. Like, it is a very dumb movie. I like dinosaurs, all right? I, th I just thought it was cool seeing dinosaurs. Decision to Leave is a South Korean movie directed by the same guy who did Old Boy, I think. It's like a crime drama romance sort of movie, and it didn't quite leave an impression on me like I had hoped it would. Like, it would, no, it was really good. It's super well made. I want to give it another watch. Um, but it just, yeah, it didn't really, like, leave an impression on me, which I was kind of hoping it would. Bob's... Burgers movie, which I didn't even know came out this year. I have been pretty vocal previously in my dislike of musicals, and I think the Bob's Burgers movie really made me shut up about that, because this is the first movie where I've genuinely wanted more songs. There's only like three of them in there. Um, and I've listened to them on repeat like a thousand times. They they give up pretty quickly. I've never seen Bob's Burgers. I talked about this in the uh, cartoon movies video for those who have seen that. I pretty much gave most of my opinion on it there. But it reminded me a lot of the Simpsons movie with the animation. Like um, in terms of it looking like super huge upgrade from the show. Uh, I'm not sure if I should count this or not. To be honest. The Inside Outtakes came out on YouTube. Obviously Inside was one of my favorite uh, movies from last year, if you want to call it a movie. And then like randomly this year, Bo Burnham just drops like basically a DLC for Inside for free on YouTube with no like a prior announcement whatsoever. I've obviously been listening to all of the songs on repeat even still now, like six months after I saw it. Just to have it like come out of nowhere with no warning whatsoever and just be like, here's another hour of content uh, that I made out of Inside was just amazing. One of the two anime movies I saw all year was uh, the Mobile Suit Gundam movie which was really good. For those who don't know, this is a movie-length adaption of what everyone considers to be the worst episode of the original series because they like outsourced the animation or something because they needed like a filler week. Extending a 20-minute episode that was completely unrelated to the series into a full movie worked way more than I thought it would. The Gundam is barely in it. Like the scenes that it made the scenes where it was in it like way cooler. Um, I would absolutely love to see a full remake of the original Mobile Suit Gundam if just one random episode can be this good. Dragon Ball Super Superhero, the worst title for the best movie I saw last year. I was very apprehensive with uh, Superhero because obviously Broly was like everything I've ever wanted from a Dragon Ball movie. To see them nail the the like the art style and animation and then to immediately go back on it, I was a bit worried about. But the 3D animation was really good. I guess. So as someone whose favorite Dragon Ball character is Piccolo, I cannot tell you how satisfying it was to finally have a movie where he gets to do something other than just be the guy who shows up and looks cool and then gets taken out by the main villain to make Goku look cooler. I, I haven't been keeping up with Dragon Ball too much after like uh, Broly. I haven't seen any of Super or anything. It's just not really my thing anymore. But I was super excited to see a Dragon Ball movie without Goku that like focused more on the characters with less spotlight, specifically Gohan and Piccolo, who I feel like have been super duper sidelined like the past decade or so. I do love that they still could not resist having Goku and Vegeta in there at some point, but that to me felt more of like a um, an update of like where, what the characters had been up to since Broly, more so than than anything, so that was fine. I don't know, it was, it was more of what I wanted out of uh, Dragon Ball, so it was really good. Thor Love and Thunder, I'm going to retroactively move down out of fear of the chat. Uh, I might put it beneath the Northmen so people don't get mad at me. I, when I went into it, I, I had no issues whatsoever. I was like, that was great. I had fun. And then I went home and I went on Reddit and every single person was like, this movie fucking sucks. <laughs> Looking back on it, I get where a lot of the, like I agree in retrospect, like a lot of the problems I had with it in that it was a bit too jokey. I think Ragnarok super nailed like the mix between comedy and action and like seri you know seriousness. And Thor Love and Thunder sort of leaned a little bit too into the goofiness. Yeah, so the stuff with Gore I thought was great. Like there was like that scene where they're on the black and white planet was really interesting. I wish there was more stuff like that, but there's a lot of like really silly moments in it. And some of it worked for me, some of it didn't. Like the screaming goat joke got old the first time. Okay, Beavis and Butthead do the universe. I got barely anything out of, to be honest. Like, I watched it for the cartoon movies video because I felt like I had to, but I enjoyed um, do, the, do America way more. As someone who's not a fan of the series, I think it was um, not for me. The Man from Toronto. Yo, this is... I'm putting this beneath Morbius and I don't even feel bad. I cannot believe Netflix has this ability to churn out absolute garbage at such a regular basis. I got absolutely nothing out of The Man from Toronto. I, we watched it. I watched it with some friends. Uh, they chose it, obviously, because uh, haha Woody Harrelson and haha Kevin Hart. I got more out of Morbius. I'm not even kidding. It was such a nothing movie. But in saying that, I feel like you could enjoy it if that was your thing. I, I feel like I'm being a bit too harsh on it, actually. I don't know. It, it wasn't like, it's not that it's terrible. Like, it's not incompetently made or anything. It was just, I just got nothing out of it. The one that everyone in the fucking 
chat is hounding me about Bullet Train, Jesus Christ. I understand the low critical reception for it, like, I get it. But I had so much fun with it. Like, it was super funny. The action was really good. And I thought they did, like, they, they do a lot of flashbacks. And, like, obviously, every time they introduce a character, they, they go back a bit. I thought that non-linear storytelling worked really well. Zombies 3! For those who watched the last 2021 movies video, I had two series on there. Zombies and the after movies. Started watching ironically with friends. And at this point, I am unironically enjoying them. And I'm getting more. It's like literal Stockholm Syndrome. Zombies 3 was my favorite one. I... I actually genuinely enjoy- I mean, we rewatched the other Zombies movies first, and I, like, genuinely enjoyed them way more than I did the first time. Uh, the songs were better. It was- it's, a, it's the last movie in the series, and I think they nailed it. But, like, I just don't know what's happened to me. Like, I genuinely- I went from, like, hating them, like, genuinely, to absolutely loving them. And it's incredible how you can, like, meme yourself into loving a movie. Nope is another one that has a lot of divide on it, I think, uh, is really interesting. I think it was one of my favorites of the whole year. I e would even say that I liked it more than, uh, Get Out. Uh, which is saying a lot <laughs> because I love that movie. For me, it was just the way that Jordan Peele like presents horror in the movie. He's really pushing the boundaries of uh, what you can get away with because I was very disappointed at first that it was only rated M, but I think this movie scared me more than uh, both Us and Get Out, which are both rated uh, MA. Th there's something so unearthly about um, all of the scares in this movie, which is obviously the point. But I mean that in like in terms of it being really unique and uh, and being very memorable. I, I think he absolutely crushed it in that department. I, I was scared shitless more than once during this movie. I went into it not knowing anything about it except something to do with UFOs. So not knowing that and going into it completely blind, I think was like a huge benefit because I, I was blown away. Prey! Oh my god. Okay, so I had to watch this one. I know I didn't catch a lot of streaming movies, but I was so excited for Prey. Like, it made Predators genuinely scary again. Like, I was honestly stressed out while watching it. It's It was super good. Oh my god. They sold me completely before the movie came out with just, like, the time period it set in, and I am so happy that the rest of the movie is just as cool as that idea. Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I talked about the show. I think I, I did talk about this in the cartoon movies video, so I'll be brief, but, uh, yeah, basically fixed all of the problems I had with the show. The animation is absolutely god-tier. Genuinely incredible. Like, I was, I was sitting there in awe of, like, like, how did they pull this off? It went so hard. I can't even tell you. It's so good. Huge recommend. Beast. Okay. Uh, movie two of the Big Driss double feature. I have to admit, I was not a huge fan of Beast. This is a movie where Idris Elba fights a lion, and it was exactly what I expected out of that premise. There's a lot of, like, long takes in it, as in, like, there was a lot more care put into it than I was thinking uh, from the trailer, which kind of made it look kind of generic, to be honest. But, yeah, um, in terms of it, like, it, it was very well-crafted and everything. Thing, but I think I, I just didn't get really very invested in it after ever happy again I am extremely concerned at how invested in the series I am. I am not even kidding. I am enjoying them. I, I'm invested. I'm not I'm not memeing. After Ever Happy is exactly the same as all of the other movies. They, Harden and Tessa, for those who don't know and didn't see last year's video, right? This is a, it is a movie adaption of a Harry Styles fan fiction and they've made four movies out of it. And it is the worst <laughs> series ever made and it is so entertaining i cannot stop watching them it's Harden and tessa in every fucking movie they they fall in love they argue they break up they cheat on each other and then they get back together and the movie ends and it, I, i'm i'm invested i love it we saw it yeah i saw it in the cinemas and i was genuinely i got more out of it than fucking like uh, maybe not more than beast i feel like it's disrespectful <laughs> barbarian oh my god no one saw this barbarian i went into zero idea what it was about it was the best choice i've ever made i went into it just seeing the poster. I knew something about Airbnb. This movie is equally scary and funny. Like there were times I was like on the edge of my seat and then it, like 10 minutes later I was laughing my ass off. It nailed that mix of like humor and and like genuine terror. I don't want to tell you anything about it. I, I just recommend it. It was really good. Bones and All is a movie by the director of Call Me By Your Name, which I liked a, mo a lot more. Uh, I thought it was good. It's just another one of those ones where I feel like I didn't get a lot out of it. Like, I, I maybe want to rewatch it again. It's about, like, um, they don't explicitly call them vampires, but they're basically vampires. It's, like, very, it's super well made. Like, it, it really, it's very, like, immersive, I want to say. Like, the way it's shot, and a lot, like, it's, it's like a road trip movie, right? And a lot of it is very atmospheric, and I, I really enjoyed, like, the vibe of the movie, but I just didn't really 
feel much for their relationship in it. I, I don't know. What did everyone think of Don't Worry Darling for everyone who saw it? I liked the first two thirds of it a lot. Like the build up was great. And obviously I'm super biased. I love Harry Styles. So I was like, fuck yeah. You know, Harry Styles in this movie. I'm, I'm going to love it regardless. He's barely in the fucking movie. I think they, they must have cut him. I didn't like hate it. I think a lot of people ragged on it a lot, which is a shame because Olivia Wilde, the director, she did, um, I think Booksmart, didn't she? Booksmart is like one of my favorite movies from 2019 because that's more of like a um, coming of age sort of drama. This one's like a sci-fi horror sort of movie like thriller. Uh, so it's it's cool to see her like try a different uh, genre. Yeah, I liked it. I liked it, but I, I didn't. I thought it could have been a lot better. Ticket to Paradise. Okay, this was a mom movie. I'm sorry. I saw it with my mom. I liked it. I like seeing movies with my mom. Yeah, it was like, it was a nice like beach summer vibe movie. I liked it. I enjoyed it. It was fine. <laughs> you know, it's a mom movie. You know, I got a, it's not much to say about it. Oh yeah, see how they run. No one, no one here has seen this. If anyone here has seen this, I will be so surprised. Yeah, it was this like a uh, murder mystery with Sam Rockwell and Saoirse Ronan. And like the two of them have a very familiar, but still very fun to watch dynamic between the two of them. Yeah, I, I really liked it. Like it was great. It was like, it's funny, not in the traditional sense. Like a lot of the jokes were very dry. Oh yes, Glass Onion. Okay. I was lucky enough to see this in cinemas. I am so happy. Uh, Netflix was kind enough to release it in cinemas. I guess they wanted more money. I absolutely adored it. I don't know if I'd say I liked it as much as Knives Out, but it was very close. Yeah, I hope Ryan Johnson makes like a million more of these. It is entirely the characters that like carry the whole. I definitely don't think it would work as well without such a strong uh, like set of characters or performances from them. And that's what I was kind of worried about with it, to be honest, was that I was like, there was no way they're going to get a cast like as perfect as the one from Knives out. But no, I was really surprised. I love these guys just as much. A very different set of characters, but like equally as entertaining. And obviously Daniel Craig was absolutely amazing again. I would genuinely watch like another million movies with this character and still not get bored. Okay, the menu. Huge surprise. I thought this movie was going to be about cannibalism and was going to be really dumb. It was not. It was great. Genuinely super stressful movie. I um, It is like a horror comedy. It was equally as funny as uh, as it was like tense. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. Very, very bizarre movie. Project Wolf Hunting. No one here has heard of this. This is another South Korean movie my friend uh, suggested we go see. Project Wolf Hunting is the most violent movie I've ever seen in my life. I've It was rated R here and it takes a lot to get a movie rated R in cinemas. Initially, I was like genuinely kind of unnerved by the violence, but there was so much of it in the movie that I was completely desensitized to it by the end. It is so excessive and gory. Uh, in a great way, like for the- Oh yeah, that's right. So without giving anything away, because I do recommend this movie um, if you can stomach gore, but the first half or third of it is a lot more realistic. And I, I enjoyed that a bit more than the turn it took. Like it goes for a more Resident Evil-y sort of route, which I liked, don't get me wrong, but I liked it a lot more uh, in the first like third of it. Oh, yo, smile. I can't wait to hear what people think of this. One of my friends made a very good point that if you go into a movie expecting to hate it, you're probably going to hate it. I went into it expecting it to be like the Bye Bye Man. For me more so, I talked about this on Button Smashes. Smile was like the fucking worst cinema experience and the best at the same time. The cinema I was in, there was this girl. I, so if I'm sitting here, there was this girl in a row, like three maybe rows. And she was so loud <laughs> throughout the whole movie. Every time there was like a, a silent bit with like a jump scare, she was like audibly like, no, 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 no. Like, and she'd scream. And there was this one bit where she was like, what the fuck are you doing? And everyone in the whole cinema cracked up. I could not have possibly taken this movie seriously because of the audience I had. In terms of like how it was presented, they definitely put a lot more effort into it than I was expecting. I don't know, like the camera work, it, it was like, I don't know, I really, I thought it was very obnoxious, I didn't like it, but uh, I get why people would, I didn't think it was terrible. The end was pretty cool. Okay, uh, I'm gonna count Werewolf by Night, just for the sake of, because I know people wanted me to talk about it, but it's not really a movie. This was my favorite Marvel thing that came out this year. It was super different from the rest of the MCU, which we're obviously all really wanting at the moment, I think. I thought it was super cool, really well made, I did not expect to like it at all, I put it on just on a whim. Uh, the black and white works super well, the cinematography Photography was excellent. Okay, we're almost there. We're in the last row. We're almost there, guys. Hocus Pocus 2. I didn't love the original, to be honest. I think I liked it more in 
retrospect after watching the second one because it made me appreciate it a bit more. Um, it wasn't bad, but it definitely had that like, I don't know, the modern jokes that didn't really work as well for me, but I, it was really nice seeing the Sanderson sisters again. I didn't grow up with Hocus Pocus. I watched it like a year ago, but yeah, I didn't like, I, did, I think growing up with it, you have a bit of a different... Uh, opinion on it, but it was good. It was still good. Don't get me wrong. Halloween ends. You're gonna hate me for this. You're all gonna hate me for this. I thought ends was actually really interesting for most of it because Michael Myers is barely in it. Like it's a super, it feels like a passing of the torch sort of like more of like an epilogue sort of thing focusing on that like evil never dies thing they were talking about in uh, the other two movies. I enjoyed it. Like some of it was un unintentionally hilarious and some of it I genuinely thought was pretty interesting. It definitely didn't go in the direction I thought it would and I want to give it props for that until the last 20 minutes. Like I liked it on on its own, but just in terms of the overall trilogy, Ends is so confusing as to why it goes the direction it does. Like when compared to the other two movies, like it makes me not like kills even more somehow. <laughs> Bro, Asylum movies have corrupted his taste. Yeah, after watching that shit, dude, anything looks good. I'm not saying it was amazing. I, I just, um, I thought it was a bit better than a lot of people are giving it credit for. Speaking of best movies of the year, did anybody else watch Grim Cuddy? She, she would put that above smile. Grim Cuddy is a Disney Plus or Hulu if you're in America exclusive movie about an internet meme that comes to life and starts killing everyone. I went into it expecting it to be hilariously bad and watching it with friends definitely elevated it, but I hate that I didn't dis disagree with the moral of it. Not to like spoil the actual content of the movie, but it comes off as like a very phone bad sort of movie, but it was kind of about the uh, the Momo shit that happened like a couple years ago. It felt like a feature long Darman video is the best way I can describe it. Definitely recommend. I laughed every time he came on screen. I fucking died laughing. Oh, yo, okay. Speaking of real best movies of the year, Black Adam, Ayo. Black Adam was fine. Like, I didn't think it was fucking awful. I really liked the Justice Society. I thought that that kind of saved the movie for me. Black Adam was my least favorite part about it. And obviously, you know, all, with all the shit going on with DC right now, I'm so surprised that it actually got made. Black Panther. This was probably my favorite Marvel movie the whole year. I thought for a movie that was obviously very like slapped together, like they had to rewrite a ton of stuff obviously with Chadwick passing away. It felt, it didn't feel like that to me at all. It, it felt like a movie they, they'd like been planning. Uh, and maybe there were elements of the original cut that made it in, in there, but for a movie like all about grief and like it is a very <laughs> miserable movie. I thought Shuri was a surprisingly good protagonist. Like I, I was kind of dreading going into the movie without like T'Challa being in it, but I thought they really did a good job with the characters in it. There's this whole subplot with like US agents that have absolutely nothing to do with the rest of the movie. Yeah, that could have been cut like a ton, but I think that's obviously setting up future movies. Or again, maybe it was better integrated into the original version, but yeah, Black Panther super blew me away. Okay, Guardians Holiday Special. I liked Guardians Holiday Special a lot. It definitely felt like an appetizer for the upcoming volume three. The only problem I had with it was that I wanted it to be longer, I guess, but it was, it was a fun little like half hour. Violent Night. Violent Night was fun. The action scene started out a little bit rough, which was a bit worrying because that's like the main appeal of the movie and everything. Uh, but they definitely got a lot better than what the further it went on. Uh, like really good by the end. They're super creative in terms of like using uh, Christmas related stuff for violence. Uh, there is an Australian movie called Carnifex that my friend suggested we watch. And I, again, I went into that like, eh, but it was pretty good. It's a movie about uh, drop bears, like the uh, extinct species that drop bears were based off of. I thought it was going to be super low budget, but it actually kind of surprised me with like how good the CG was, especially for an Australian movie, which usually would have what, like $5 and a VB. <laughs> I thought the performances as well were like really strong. They kept me like really engaged throughout the movie. I don't know if other people would really get as much out of it. It's more of like a bunch of people walking around a forest and uh, they like filming a documentary about the bushfires. Okay, Roderick Rules I already talked about in the video I made on it. I uh, don't need to elaborate on that. It was like, it was surprisingly fine. Yeah, don't, Roderick Rules is definitely an improvement over last year. I, I hope they get gradually better, but yeah, like, you know, I didn't get a ton out of it. Okay, Avatar. I am very interested to hear what people thought of this one. My friend insisted that he might be watching this now. He insisted that we watch this movie in 3D and I have glasses. So I had to put 
the 3D glasses on top of my glasses, and I could not see shit, dude. That whole movie looked like a PS2 cutscene. I could not tell you if the visuals, which are obviously like the major part that everyone is raving about, looked even any good. I, I thought it was like, it was good. And I gotta say, for an almost three and a half hour long movie, I was surprised at how quickly it went by. When the movie ended, I honestly was bracing myself for there to be like at least another hour to go. So I got this complete whiplash when the credits came up. It was like, Wait, that's it? But like, yeah, I, I really would like to watch it again without 3D. No, that's a lie. I don't want to watch it again. <laughs> okay, and last but not least, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. Hated it. I thought it was shit. Puss in Boots, maybe recency bias, maybe. But holy shit. Okay, DreamWorks had a really good year last year. I only saw this movie because I knew that the animation was going to be different, like look more like the bad guys. But like in general, everything was like top notch. It's interesting because I feel like I had more fun with the bad guys, but I would rate them both extremely close. Like both of them the whole time I was just like having so much fun. I loved how much they took advantage of the fairy tale stuff. I kind of forgot. We haven't had a, a Shrek movie in like a hundred years. I kind of genuinely forgot Shrek is meant to be like a big parody of, of fantasy fairy tale stuff. The fight scenes were incredible. They, they went so hard with this movie. I cannot praise it enough. Puss in Boots managed to pull almost like everything off without feeling like a kid's movie, if that makes sense. Like it didn't feel like it was aiming itself at kids at all. It's very like violent and this like <laughs> sense of bleeps in it. It was super like edgy, but not like in the Shadow the Hedgehog way, you know what I mean? And you know what I'm excited about? The next movie is Kung Fu Panda 4. And if Kung Fu Panda 4 follows in that footstep, in those footsteps, like holy shit. Sorry, that is every movie. Uh, that I went through. But yeah, a lot of the movies I really want to, yeah, like Shin Ultraman, I really want to catch. Pinocchio, Lightyear, I didn't get everything I really wanted to catch, but I figured there were what, uh, 60 movies exactly? Yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I hope this is a bit different. Sorry if it's been a bit all over the place or boring. I don't know. But yeah, thanks guys. Thanks so much for watching.